I first read about them about 10 years ago in a magazine and read about this guy named Arnulfo, who was this incredible runner who had won a bunch of races and some of his relatives had come to the States back in the mid 90s and broken the course record at these 100 mile races against some of America's most highly trained elite athletes. And I thought, wow, how are these indigenous, virtually barefoot runners um, whipping the world's most highly trained athletes. I've been running ever since I was five years old. Just, I started chasing my dad around the block. Ran through high school and college, ran marathons, um, but really hit my stride in my early 20s when I started focusing on trail running and ultra running. I seemed to just get an energy from the forest when I, when I run there. So when I started focusing on trail running and ultra running, I started to um, achieve some moderate success. I've won about a dozen ultras, including I'm the five-time champion and course record holder here at the, the Mount Mitchell Challenge. I'm also the course record holder for the Appalachian Trail through the Smokies. I ran end-to-end -end across Great Smoky Mountains National Park, uh, which is about 72 miles along the Appalachian Trail. But all of those accomplishments seem pretty petty compared to the kind of running that the Raramari do on a daily basis. And so initially my interest was more from a running perspective. I took a couple of trips down there and on one of my hikes with one of their elders through the canyons, I asked him, what, you know, what makes a Raramari a Raramari? He said, one, they observe the ceremonies, two, they protect the forest, and three, they run. So at the heart of who they are is running. An American who lives down in the canyons named Caballo Blanco created and organized this running event for, for almost a decade. Over the past few years, it's grown to become a world-class race. A few years ago, Scott Jurek, who is probably the world's best ultra runner, ran against Arnulfo and dozens of other Raramari and lost to a barefoot goat herder. It's a race near the town of Arique. It starts at the bottom of the canyons and runs across some beautiful rivers, across old footbridges. It has a mix of a wide variety of terrains. It's just shy of 50 miles. It's a really amazing experience to see an entire town come together and line the streets for a race. It felt like something out of last century. And so when I was running in this race, I was experiencing a connection that's, that's deeper than anything I've felt. So we lined up at the start of the race, over a dozen international runners, including some top American runners, a top runner from France, Japan's top trail runner, Hiroki Ishikura. They were uh, calling him El Dragon El Japon, um, the dragon from Japan. Caballo Blanco started the race and 225 Raramari sprinted ahead. Some of them had never run in a race before. Some of them were wearing jeans. Many of them were carrying sticks to help them ford the river. Some folks wearing cowboy hats. But many of the Raramari were wearing their traditional garb, brightly colored kind of blouses and loincloths. And I started out just at a comfortable pace, just watching the runners stream by. I was way back in the pack, just kind of watching things. The elite American and international runners were still way ahead, and so were some of the top Raramari, including Arnulfo. And then, as we crossed the bridge across the Enrique River downstream, I really started feeling the presence of a Raramari that I had met on a previous hike, uh, a 10-year-old boy who um, had been my guide. and. Sadly, this boy, Valentin, a year earlier, had died. He had fallen from a cliff. I don't know what happened, but I let my body just go and kind of shut off my mind for a little while. And before I knew it, I caught up with some of the top runners. And for kind of the two-thirds point, about the mile 36, I was in third place. 
He was pretty emotional when I actually passed Arnulfo because he had been a hero to me for a decade. I could see that he was struggling. The, the, the midday heat was starting to take its toll. It got up into the upper 90s that day. And so when we arrived back in town at mile 36, roughly, it was down to just myself and Hiroki and one other Raramari runner who had kind of faded back. I, w I was really um, torn at that point because this race was for them and I had never even conceived of, of being in the front of the race and frankly I didn't know if I should. And so I considered stopping there, um, but my friend Mickey was there. When I told him my mixed emotions as I was stopping to get a drink, he said, you gotta, you gotta keep going and you gotta give it everything you have. That's what these people want and don't stop now. And that was good advice because I don't think the Raramari want charity. Amazingly, I, I ended up winning the race um, beyond my wildest expectations and it was both unexpected and an incredible experience um, emotionally. I, I, I just was um, at a loss for words at the finish line. Um, I tried to explain in broken Spanish how I had dedicated this race to, to, to Valentin, the, the 10 year old boy. I was just overcome with emotion, I think because I had felt something larger in that running experience in the canyons that was so much bigger than me and so much bigger than the race or, or, or anything else. And I think what was the most powerful for me was um, what happened after the race. I received $3,000 and basically a ton of corn, which all of the American and international runners donated back to the Raramari. But I gave my $3,000 prize money to Arnulfo because he was the rightful winner of the race. He was the, the first Raramari to finish. Late that night, Arnulfo and I were walking back to our hostel. He said, wait, wait here for a moment, in, in kind of broken Spanish. Uh, wait here, I, I have Korama. I had heard the word before, Korama, which sounds a lot like karma and, and means basically the same thing, is, is one of the central precepts of Raramari culture. It's um, giving without expectation of getting something back. When you give anything to a Raramari person, they typically don't say thank you. Not because they're not grateful or appreciative, but because their sense of korma is just, that's what human beings do, where we see giving as something extra or something that you should get praise for. To the Raramari, giving is just so ingrained in who they are that it's not something you have to go out of the way to say thank you for. And so he returned and um, gave me my most prized possession um, from, from really from anything, but especially from any running experience, um, this handmade uh, rosary. He put this around my neck and never before did I feel more like a champion than when I got a laurel from Arnulfo, a, um, a handmade necklace from in my opinion, the world's greatest runner. Panaraja shima boba, tutuguria wi boba. Panaraja shima boba, daraji pamaritu boba. Panaraji, panaraji, tamari hiraba. Panaraji, panaraji, tamari hiraba.